Good afternoon and welcome to this uh, special interview today, Tuesday, the 19th of uh, January 2021. Now, Zambia has seen a sustained fuel shortage in most parts of the country with uh, sporadic availability of the commodity recently. This is despite government having removed 16% VAT refunds, which all companies said was not enough, prompting the state to remove excess duty on imported petroleum products. This is said to have aimed at ensuring the effects of the depreciated quacha factors do not result in a price hike. Like I did mention in the afternoon that at 16, we'll be having a special interview with um, the oil marketing companies. And um, my name is Kelvin Dabola, Chief Fokker. Those of you that are watching us on a Top Star Decoder, yours is channel 104. Those of you that are watching us on a movie TV decoder, yours is channel 1. And um, those of you that are joining the conversation, or you can still join the conversation on Facebook, yours is Ask Movie. Remember to drop us your comment and we'll be able to read through. If it is a question, my guest will be able to respond and give an answer to that question. My name is Kelvin Tabola, Chief Focal. My guest is president of the Oil Marketing Companies Association of Zambia. This is no other than Dr. Kafula Mubanga. Doc, good afternoon and welcome to this special interview. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and good afternoon, viewers. First thing first, how is uh, Omkas doing? No, we're faring quite well. A uh, bit of challenges, storms here and there, but uh, uh, it, gradually we, we're getting ground and uh, ensuring that we, we get more members on board and deliver our objectives. Let's start by, uh, like I've mentioned in my preamble, we have seen disturbing pictures, uh, disturbing news from uh, uh, different provinces. Uh, Copper Belt is one of them, uh, Central, Southern. First of all, Let's establish the fact. Why are we having shortage of fuel? Or why is it that these uh, provinces are experiencing a shortage of fuel? Well, like uh, the Honorable Minister did allude to in his earlier statement, they, there is a deliberate, deliberate rise of price on, uh, on ports of discharge, such as Beira. Uh, fuel has just technically gone up. Uh, uh, from the point of global market perspective. So we we having that rise. And this is why you see that government, uh, through his uh, various departments, such as the Ministry of Energy, has actually come in to ensure that there are certain incentives or tax rebates that are given to all marketing companies in ensuring that there is stabilization of this supply on the market. So, so uh, w when you say fuel has gone up. Is it in this country or where fuel is being imported from? No, it's a global market effect. You see, fuel is controlled by plots and basically these are forces, the market forces that determine the, the, the oil market pricing. And now on a global perspective, you have an increase on the, what the price looks like on the global market. And that triggers increase on the other um, end users such as countries and buyers so they demand that the, the the more the price goes up from the from the global market perspective and then you have that ripple effect coming down to consumers and suppliers so that is what is happening on the ground as it is because about two three weeks ago you were buying product say uh, the metric cube was about two three five and now it's almost diesel is going at 366 six. Uh, for petrol you've got 369 uh, and this has raised in a space of about a month now so you can tell that the the spot pricing in Beira or Da has actually technically gone up <coughs> yes uh, <coughs> we are also being told those Zambians are being told that there is a reported tug of war between government and all marketing uh, prospects uh, looking at uh, the possibility of hiking fuel of the price of fuel going up well yeah the 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 the, the, the tag of all I, I i probably am not very aware about that but i do know that uh government and omcs are on talking terms 
uh, in ensuring that the price of fuel, the commodity, remains as government has committed to its people. Mm. And so government has embarked on various strategies that will ensure that the price of the product remains consistent as much as possible in, the, in, the, in, in, in a few months to come. Uh, when you say there are these talks that are ongoing, you've mentioned that uh, oh, prices started changing maybe a month ago. Yes. Why are you having these talks now? Well, government has had a proactive process, but you know submissions have been going on for a longer time. But you see, government had to take its own study to ensure that they put up a measure. Naturally, what happens is that as oil marketing companies, we submit various submissions to, to Ministry of Energy, which then entails that the internal process of that review or proposal starts going through, but then it doesn't happen just overnight. So what we have seen is that as OMCAS, we've submitted various submissions, including the rebate on, on the VAT and the, and, the, and, the, and the excise duty, all right? We've done those submissions. We are part of the, of the team that had that submission done. And government obviously had to start the effect, the repo effect of that. And eventually government has granted us that, which means that uh, cost of product in terms of importing of the product has reduced by that margin taking into mind or into account that of course the product uh, has, 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 has been hiked uh, on, on global market but that removal of the tax rebate or reduction or removal complete removal of VAT and the excess duty would actually give a cushion to the OMCs. Now, now, when you say government wants to do their own, uh, for, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it as if government doesn't believe in your submissions. Whenever you come up with a submission, say, because the prices are changing, so we intend to do this, does it mean government doesn't trust in you people when you, uh, you, when you bring forward a suggestion? Does it mean they don't believe in you and that is why they want to do their own investigations? On the contrary, government, our current government of His Excellency, Dika Chagrelungu, has been a listening government. I personally say so as president of OMCAS. We've done this submission, uh, with these submissions, and I can tell you that government has actually responded to specific requisitions that we've met. Mm. Of course, it's prudent for government to take its own research. It will not act on first hand. We are business people. And sometimes business people drive a business agenda, but government has to take into consideration the ripple effect of that uh, business proposal that we're putting in place. But I want to affirm that there are various submissions that we have done and engagements that we have done with the Ministry of Energy uh, through the Office of the Honorable Minister and the PS, and these issues have been adequately addressed. When you say these issues have been adequately ad uh, addressed, uh one who is watching, one who is experiencing these challenges of, uh, you know, start looking for, for fuel from one point to another, then you receive a call. Maybe you are in Choston, a colleague who is in Matero, calls you and say there is a fuel here. If these submissions or proposals were taken into consideration, why are we experiencing this? You said this government has been a listening government. Exactly. The shortage, the, the shortage that we are experiencing is not long-lasting, like, like the minister had mentioned. Remember that the first incentive as OMCs that, that we had received was very, basically the rebate on, uh, on, 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 on VAT. Now we have the excise duty. It means that basically your cost of importing the product has lowered. I just want to make it clear to the listeners that the cost of the taxes at the time prior to this was like 100,000 quarter. Mm. All right? Now, government has swallowed that cost on its own to give relief to the OMCs. So when you compete in percentage terms, the increase of this product in bearer is almost at about maybe 20%. Uh, mm. But government has given a relief of over about 40%. So when you look at those margins, you can tell that it's still viable to trade in, in the industry and still make margins possible. You've talked about VAT. Now, uh, you have seen government. Why, and, and, and people are asking these questions, say, why is it that all marketing companies are trying to untwist um, government despite, uh, you know, 
the, the VAT, the SI 125 that was introduced in 2020. And they're saying, uh, people thought now it will be smooth. And now they are, the oil marketing companies are being accused that they are trying to untwist government. Really, you know, shed more light on that one and uh, the introduction of the SI and the VAT. Well, the, the introduction of, of an SI mm. was the right move by government in mitigating the impact of global market change. And that answered a lot more to the importers of this product. That was number one scold. Uh, on the second part, it's basically that um, the challenge we have, and which we are still appealing to government, is that much of this commodity trade has been controlled by multinationals. And because they do have the capacity to supply compared to the indigenous Zambian. Now, there, uh, there must be clear qualification between an indigenous Zambian and a local uh, uh, oil marketing company uh, operating. Now, you realize that the seventh, development, the seventh Development Plan has actually advocated for 50% supply by the local OMCs. Mm. The challenge with that particular clause in our constitution, it does not elaborate more to give the, 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 the empowerment needed to an indigenous OMC. So you can be a local OMC because you are registered by PACRA and still be a foreign driven company. And under that clause, you're still considered as a local OMC. So when we probe and say, government, give us the 40%, the 50% enshrined in the seventh development plan as local OMCs to supply this product, it turns out that the law provides for not for, not, for, for, not for indigenous Zambians, it provides for local OMCs. So we're trying to work with government to make sure that this is specified. The reason I touch that company is very simple, that if the majority supply is actually supplied by indigenous Zambians, we will avoid the vacuum that we are seeing. There is need for government to realize that they need to empower the indigenous companies, Zambian-driven companies so that i'll give you an, ex an example mm. um <clears throat> you get a a 10 million liter waiver uh to go and speak to a refinery they'll not hear you you are joking so you eventually get to a spot supply in um in um in Beira, which the pricings are actually radically high but of someone who gets a huge supply is able to engage with the refinery at a flat price and be given that contract for the next 12 months, the only thing that he suffers is, a, is, is, is Forex effect during the course of that contract, okay? But you as a Zambian, indigenous OMC, cannot go to a refinery with a 10 million contract. You can't. But if you're given and empowered, the total, this is why OMCAS is seeking government's interventions in making sure that this market of the petroleum industry, which is a very critical component of, 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 of any, any, any government. It should be Zambian driven, not Zambian by, by status, but Zambian by origin. When you go to countries like South Africa, go to Namibia, this is a model which they use in the petroleum industry. Today you can be insulted by a foreign national that you, these briefcase uh, OMCs is because we have not been backed enough to take up this industry as Zambians and work with the foreign colleagues. Remember as, as, as president for OMCAS, I'm not advocating for only, um, we're not only advocating for, for the local or indigenous OMCs. We're we are speaking on behalf of all the OMCs. But the gap between the indigenous and the local, assumably local OMCs, is very huge. L let's talk about your, 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 your association. You've talked about multinationals, you've talked about indigenous, you've talked about local OMCs, you've talked about Zambians. Let's talk about, uh, where, where do you get your membership? Well, our membership is cuts across. When you look at our mandate by the ministry, our lining ministry, mm. it talks about uh, getting everybody uh, to affiliate. That means that even if you're indigenous, you're local, you're multinationals. But there is always a resistance to formation of such 
uh, organization in the oil industry. By the way, it's the only industry that was vulnerable that didn't have an association. It didn't have an advocate system. Okay? It didn't have somebody to speak on behalf of the traders. It was the only industry. The reason is that the multinationals, the big guys, they didn't want, they don't want to sit on the same table with the smaller ones to negotiate. Like now, we're advocating to say, let the national, let 15% or 20% of what the multinationals are consuming go to the locals. Okay? If that 20% is given to an indigenous local OMC, OMC then these people are empowered. Eventually, you want to see that, uh, you know, this OMC eventually grows to own filling stations. But you have a situation where some OMC, perceivably, OMCs, have been under certain uh, multinationals. Given the number of years have they traded in this country, none of them owns one filling station. That's not empowerment. Under the local empowerment scheme, government must have a policy that strengthens and compels, you know, multinationals to take interest in empowering the locals. We are going to have this drift for a long time if government does not take deliberate action in ensuring that this is enshrined in a, in a legal framework that compels, you know, these multinationals to work with the locals. So it is a situation where uh, the state has got, uh, has, got, has got a local empowerment scheme. They have got a local empowerment scheme. But the monitoring, the supervision of that particular uh, local empowerment scheme to ensure that the, the locals are empowered is not enforced. So these big boys and big companies, or uh, OMCs, they, they do it at their own peril. They just feel who to work with and what. So we are saying we want, as OMCAS, to monitor that process to make sure that there's full participation of these indigenous locals in the supply of fuel that government has allotted to various stakeholders. Yes, the issue that comes always in question is, do you have the capacity as indigenous OMCs? Government can empower us. These multinationals, where they come from, they have been empowered by their government. Through maybe a letter of credit, a guarantee. Yes, I want to, to state that government has done its best in ensuring that Zambians, for instance, the smaller OMCs, have access to Tazama and they can get uh, product on credit. That is a very commendable job because then you are, we are seeing activities coming out of there. That is a commitment by government. But we want to see a ripple, the same ripple effect that government is demonstrating uh, through Tazama. It should be compelling the other OMCs, who are major players on the market, to work with the local OMCs, not those that they are connected to, they know. No, with proper nomination, because the nomination of, the, of, of a, a, a process of nomination will entail that all these 75 M OMCs registered uh, by ERB participate in the national CAC. But if it's selective, you find that these five OMCs have worked under a particular OMC for 50 years or for 20 years. It does not pave way for new entrants. You, you, you've talked about um, uh, uh, some good plans that, 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 that you have as Omkas. And uh, can you tell us how far have you gone? And uh, you've talked about, um, you know, working together with multinationals and um, other multinationals or big guys not wanting to sit together with these small, small uh, OMCs. How far have you gone in uh, trying to bridge the gap and uh, uh, making sure that um, there is um, fair, if I may use that word, fair, or, 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 or the playing field has been leveled where small OMCs as well as multinationals, all of them can do business without one of them crying foul. Basically, as president, you need to understand that uh, belonging to an associ association is not mandatory. So, any OMC decides not to belong because it's not mandatory. But in other countries, like I'll give you an example of, the, of, 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 of South Africa. All the majors in South Africa are affiliated to a particular association. But in Zambia, it's very different. They detect the pest because they want to monopolize. They decide not to affiliate to any association. Because but they continue doing business. Of course. Then they weaken the process. Okay? 
But this is the cry we are giving, that government can compel through a legal framework to ensure that these measures affiliate to a particular OMCs, hmm. I mean association. Hmm. Because then at that point, you are also talking about skill transfers. You're also talking about various common components that can be shared within, you know, some, some, some OMCs have been here over 60 years. In those six years, there is definite an impact or the, the learning curve that they have had that as an association, they all a duty of caters to the Zambian people. Hmm. To be able to teach the young OMCs to thrive in the industry. But denial of them associating to, to an association like OMCAS denies the Zambian people or the smaller OMCs an opportunity to learn the art of the industry. So it is not meant in good faith. Hmm. Definitely. It's so come and come up with a policy to compel even multinationals that, uh, to, to, to be affiliated to OMCAS. Is that, is that, what you, is, is that one of the, the proposals? Actually, that power lies with the president. So we hope that the head of state would Have you made proposals? Of course, we've done through the ministry. To say this is what is supposed to be done? Exactly, yes. So you're waiting for feedback or...? We're waiting for feedback. Like I said, some of these requisitions, request submissions that we've done, they've been responded to. Mm. And we are engaging the state. The state will call you, you engage. How will they look at matters? But this is what our, our appeal is that the delay in the process mm. has got a ripple effect. Yes. Because remember, we're going into an election year. Mm. And we are already, we are already actually. Mm. So the multinationals, the other part that you need to understand is that when you order product, this product is stored up in bearer. You can hold stock for as long as you want. Stock that is meant for Zambia, I can hold it up. The Zambian government And you has, can't be punished? No, I, it's, 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 it's external. So you can order price made for Zambians to consume, of oil, of fuel for Zambians, and then you hold it, and of no course. one is going to hold no. you accountable? No one is going to punish you? That is what we... This is why OMCAS becomes a partner to ensure that these measures, these gaps are breached. Because I can be... Well... I can be, I can be what? I can be an OMC X and decide to, to decide to order. I know that the consumption of the monthly consumption is about 78 million, and I know the government is taking 40 percent. Then I order 20 percent and I hold it back. I'm a businessman. I hold it back in bearer and make sure that there's a shortage. Are you going to push that blame on government? No. Probably but the, 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 the blame will be pushed on 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 on, on, on comes. And okay. the, uh, of course, all the all market, marketing companies as a whole. Mm. The blame, when actually, it's actually these players that need to take the interest of this country. First, they have, they have worked in this environment, made their profit. What is wrong? Government has demonstrated goodwill in giving us tax rebates. What is wrong with us OMCs to be able to answer, not to just the government, but to the people of this country? A helping hand. The margins that I'm talking about, that's about 90,000, which I pay per truck to clear my product prior to this uh, uh, prior to this uh, revision okay so it means the government has literally swallowed that will I be right to say Omkaz has got no teeth to bite you've talked about people holding or companies holding on to fuel which is meant for consumption will I be right to say Omkaz has got no, no, no of teeth course to bite? of course you see it's an association mm. our job is basically advocacy all right our job is to advocate for fair play on the market, participation, and things like that. All right? But government has a tooth to bite. It has to look at various compelling policies uh, that will enforce that the market meets that. It's a lot of sacrifice by government and a lot of good work by government in ensuring that uh, these uh, various uh, uh, rebates have been, have been undertaken. But I want to state that it's very possible to see that in the next two months, these majors or these people who've got uh, major stakeholders, major, major supply, uh, share market, they can hold on to the product and still hold government at ransom. You are watching uh, the special interview on your channel of choice movie television. My guest is uh, Dr. Kafula Mubanga, president of uh, the oil, uh, the OMCAS, uh, that is uh, oil marketing. Um,
uh, Oil Marketing Companies Association of Zambia. And uh, we are looking at the fuel shortages, who is to blame. And my guest, Dr. Mwanga, is explaining and uh, taking us through uh, the process, what is supposed to be done, what is obtaining currently, and the proposals that have been made that they have been making to government on how things are supposed to be done in order for Zambians not to be experiencing, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 these shortages. At 16.30, I'll be able to open the phone line, and you'll be able to come through. If at all you've got any question to ask uh, Dr. Mwanga, he's here to respond to those questions that you have at 16.30. I'll be able to open the phone line, 978 594 Nine seven eight five nine four six eight two is the number. Let's talk about um, the multinationals. What kind of support are you being supported by these multinational companies as onkas? If not, then what is it that you are doing in order for you to be supported by these uh, multinationals? Well, government has a deliberate policy of what it's calling through the Ministry of Energy with what's called the local empowerment scheme, which has probably been only applied in part, but it is not compulsive enough for multinationals to work with the local OMCs. Why is it so? It's not very definite. It's not very enforceable because it is left at this particular multinational to decide what to do. They will give an impression to government that they are working with multinationals. And some of those companies they work with, they are owned by stakeholders of that particular company which means that the trickle-down effect of the government intent to empower the locals is really shut down. There is no monitoring mechanism to ensure that there is compliance to that effect. There are no punitive measures that government has, has put in place for non-compliance to that. And you've noted all this? Of course, we've done and you've, submissions. And you, you've done the submissions? Yes. And you're still waiting for feedback? Definitely. Do you think something was going to be done? I have very, I've got confidence in, 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 in this government that it is a listening government and in due course these issues will be addressed but we hope that they can be done in the most possible, nearest possible time. That this illusion that has been created can be eradicated. Government has gone further to, has gone ahead to remove uh, the excise duty um, but again most Zambians don't know what it, what, what it means and if at all Zambians or OMCs are going to, 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 to reap benefits to, from this. Uh, is there any benefits from what government has done? You know, uh, scrapping of VAT and now even the excise duty. And if at all there are benefits, uh, how long is it going to take? The benefits are there. As we stand, as we sit, you and me today, are already enjoying that benefit because as we speak, Prices of fuel were supposed to be pushed maybe three months ago, and government deliberately decided to look at measures and possibilities of ensuring that there's consistent pump price for, for the locals, considering obviously the, the very fact that we've had this COVID wave and businesses are affected globally, and, and I think that government has, has done its part. So to answer the fact that whether or not we are benefiting, currently we're sitting on that benefit. Mm. But this benefit has been extended more to the OMC who's supposed to bring in the product. As we stand, government has issued, I think, to all the OMCs that I can think of right now, waivers to import product. That's a very rare gesture by government because they have to monitor the inflows and outflows of this process. But they have deliberately done that to ensure that there is product on the market. So the benefit trickles down as far as the OMC, but also the consumer, who is yourself. As we speak, you're supposed to have been buying product at a high price, mm. but government has removed all these components that affect the price build-up in a procuring of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the product. 0978594682 is the number. Like I promised that at 1630, I'll be able to open the phone line so that you can come through in case you've got a complaint or in case you've got a question to ask my guest. Dr. Kafla Mwanga is here to respond to those questions or concerns. 0978594682. We are discussing fuel shortage. Who is 
to blame? Is it the oil marketing companies or is it government? Because we've seen others pushing the blame to government. Others have even accused government that uh, it is a deliberate policy or they are doing this deliberately because we are in an election year like uh, Sean Tembo of the Patriots for Economic Progress the other day said um, government, uh, the, 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 the fuel shortages that we're experiencing is because government has restricted um, uh, at how much somebody should buy when it comes to, uh, to, 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 to forex and uh, they want to put Put up a face or a picture as if our economy is doing fine when in fact our economy is not doing fine. So 0978594682 is the number. If you have any question, any query to make or to ask Okbaz, uh, the president is here, Dr. Kafula Mubanga. Doc, how do we ensure that there is a win-win kind of situation? When I talk about win-win kind of situation, I'm looking at um, indigenous or locals, I'm looking at multinationals as well as uh, consumers. What is it that needs to be done in order for you, the players, the consumers, and government also? Because people are saying, no, every time, you know, uh, all marketing companies are always um, twisting government. And, and, and if government doesn't bow to, to, the, to, 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 to the pressure that is coming from all marketing companies, then that is the reason why we are having these kind of shortages. So what is it that needs to be done in order to strike a balance and have a win-win kind of situation? Uh, there is never a point where you, as a patriot of this country, can hold government to ransom. You are duty-bound because you are Zambian to ensure that the warfare of a common Zambian is at its best. What we're appealing to government is that we have seen a serious gap that has been created over time in empowering multinationals. People who come and say, I'm offering this, and then we give them because they, they, they seem to have vast experiences uh, in, in this industry. And at, at the peril of our own country, what we are appealing to government is empower indigenous Zambians. We are advocating for indigenalism. Indig we want indigenous Zambians to be empowered. We don't want to be confused by the phrase uh, local against indigenous. In South Africa, this is very clear. You are either an indigenous, you're either a local, you're either a multinational. So first of all, we need to go back to the drawing board. Zambians can drive this economy if we empower them. Mm. Zambian-owned companies can supply the mines. You see, the gap that is there is that these multinationals have got the muscle, so they can supply the mines. When they supply the mines, the mines pay them in dollars. Then they repatriate that dollar back to their home country. The effect of empowering a local Zambian to supply the mines, when you take statistics and go to the mines, check how many OMCs are supplying those mines, very few. Even in some instances where the mine fails to pay, they get minerals from them. Imagine that the case was opposite, that the, Zambian, uh, the Zambians go supply the mines, in return they get back the minerals, then they trade, then the forex comes in the country. How about that? It's a mode of operation that we need to create that empowers and speaks more to the indigenous Zambians. I am at pains to see that these so-called investors would come, insult you in your face. You cannot trade. What volumes are you talking about? They can trade big because where they're coming from, the government is able to empower them. Some of them have entered this country maybe with one tanker, but today they are big. Because where they come from, they come, and the government has made that investor face to be amplified. Why don't we trust our own people? Yes, government has made strides, but we need much more. We need 50% driven by indigenous Zambians. Doc, doc um, I'll give an example on the construction industry. Um, complaints have been made by the government to say we have a heart and we want to help local companies, Zambian companies. But the problem is that if a contract is awarded to a local company, you find that they are selling 
to a foreign company to come and do the works. And others, they are doing shoddy works, works that are not even admired. You are talking about Zambian companies being empowered with these complaints that have come from government. How different are OMC, OMCs, indigenous OMCs in this country? We, we probably understand the gravity of our industry better. And I think that every OMC that is indigenous out there means well for this country. There's a lot of process to supply fuel. It's a delicate it's a delicate commodity. So the level of commitment that these OMCs have is very different if they are empowered. We've never been tried. There's never been a policy where, where maybe uh, an LC has been put in place for locals. Run for it. Let's see if you can supply. And we've mismanaged that. There's never been a precedent of that sort. Mm. Okay? So if the other particular sector or subsector uh, has got those deficits does not imply that even us in the industry we could be able to do that. Mostly this industry is infiltrated by professionals. Mm. So we can assert in government that if this particular sector is entrusted in the hands of indigenous, and I repeat indigenous, not locals, we will make the difference government wants to see. So uh, when you talk about indigenous, indigenous, and you talk about empowerment, empowerment, what sort of empowerment are you looking for from Number government? One, we want an allotment mm -hmm. that is enshrined in the seventh development plan to be driven by indigenous companies, not the locals. That is one. That's the one. But mm. you need to understand that obviously the cons that would be contradicting the constitution. Yeah, mm. the constitution has to redefine indigenous indigenous leasing yes. to a local. So we want that to be driven because it speaks to the needs of the indigenous Zambian. Like I've said, giving 50% supply to the locals presently might mean that you're also empowering a multinational which is locally registered. But does that mean that they will not repatriate the funds? Does that mean that they will not put this investment elsewhere? They would. Where will I go? I'm Kafula Mubanga from Chinsali. My home is in Chinsali. I will invest my investment here. I'll die investing in Zambia. So if a banda somewhere is empowered, supported by government, or government deliberately releases that 50% shareholding uh, 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 share of the market to, to, to the indigenous Zambian, you are sure that the proceeds of that process will trickle down to all the Zambians. I will employ more Zambia. Don't you think even these multinationals will still continue, maybe if at all they have done it, or they will use a banda from somewhere, or they will use a molenga from somewhere to register an OMC as if it is a Zambian owned, when in fact it is owned by somebody who is not a Zambian, but he has used somebody who is a Zambian to register. Because we've heard these things, that, 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 these things happening. And even in the oil marketing, don't you think it can still happen? Well, it's a possibility that might be there. But the fact that that banda is actually having 50% plus one in, the, in that particular uh, company, it gives us more comfort. Yes, there will be repatriation, but at the end of the day, uh, you will have more say uh, on that particular, in that particular company. What gives us comfort is that the controlling arm will be by an indigenous Zambia. It means that that banda will employ more people uh, from around us, okay, from the locals. He will employ more Mubangas, he will employ more Piris, and so on and so forth. But then the trickle-down effect can be felt. But this is what we want to appeal to our Zambian colleagues in mm. the industry. Let's be sincere. We've got a country to save. We don't have personal interest to save. We've got a country to save. And government, through its relevant ministries, uh, has issued licenses. So that us Zambians, when you look at most of those licenses, actually are Zambians that mm. have gotten them. But we hope that we can be responsible enough to answer to the call when government or the Zambian people are asking for us to be patriotic.
are you just making an appeal on this program that you are now appealing to Zambians? Or you've been making, or you've continued, or you've tried to make appeals to people that are already in the industry? That is my job as president of OMCAS, to make sure that I make possible appeals. Okay, advocacy. So I have approached most of them, and we are talking. And I can assure you that most of them are rallying. There is a serious gap in the industry. When you visit some of these uh, OMCs that have been longer than us on the market, I can assure you they are literally mourning. What is happening with the multinationals is messing everybody up. Is messing everybody up. We want to have a stake. We want to be respected. We want the, these uh, the investors to come and talk to us, not the other way around. It's our country. We want them to talk to us. We want them to come and give us a JV. Let's work together. Government has given you this order. Let's work together. That's what we're looking for. We cannot be the one pleading with them. Don't you think your, your advocacy of um, saying they must talk to you, they must talk to indigenous people who scare them away or who make them to say now they are trying to hijack us or they are trying to bulldoze, that uh, they are trying to force us to work with them and uh, if this is what uh, the Zambian OMCs want, then we don't want to do business with Zambians or we don't, we don't want to trade in Zambia and we'll look somewhere else. Are we not going to, to, to be in problems again? If they decide to say because of what the president of OMCAS and the associations have been pushing, then we feel like doing business in Zambia is not conducive. It would be the first country that will have that experience. Mm. I've worked with, you go to Tanzania, just our neighboring country. The association is allotted a portion of the national demand for consumption. You go to South Africa, it's the same model. You go to Namibia, why should it be a different case in Zambia? So anybody that will come up with that approach does not mean more for this country. Mm. And I do believe that my president, His Excellency Ediga Chagwelungu, advocates for equality among ourselves as players. So we would expect that they will respond with a positive proposal to ensure that there is an equal participation of the players on the market. You've talked about proposals that uh, you've been submitting to government and um, other proposals. Government has taken them into consideration and they have responded for other proposals that you've made. You are still waiting for government to respond. And then you talked about uh, these multinationals or big guys not willing to sit together with small or upcoming OMCs. Let's talk about um, your reaching out to these bigger guys. How has been your conversation? And, uh, They'll shut their doors. So, so they're not coming anytime no, soon? They so they're not coming in? No. So well, we shouldn't even talk about No, the, the point is they want to monopolize the market. They want to control the market. They want to detect the pace. So the door has been shut? No, I have tried. You've tried? And they have shut the door. They don't want to talk to you? They, they don't, don't want, want to engage to you. you? No, they don't. Because they know that we are now rising up, you know? Mm. In Bemba, we said Tamba Kusamba Bwino Bwino Maso. That is Nyanja. That's Nyanja, you understand? Simnari Kusamba Bwino Gauka. Gauka Lomba. Now, when you have that kind of approach, so what these guys would do is that they'll use their channel to fight your voice, your advocates. This is where the role of, of media becomes very imperative. Mm. Okay? Because we've knocked on their doors. You people, this is what we have. By the way, the formation of OMCAS has had a, a lot of frustrations, not from the Zambia, from the multinationals, the big boys. They don't want it. They don't want a collective voice. But you went higher than registered. Of course we did. Mm. Because we have a, the, the, the interests of this nation at heart. We've seen how vulnerable uh, the market is. The arm twisting processes that these people impose on government. And we're saying, look, we're here. We can save the country. We can start by 10%, 20%. But eventually, in the next five years, we want to be the ones that are supplying the state with the product. Doc, will I be right to say, then with what is happening with the fuel shortage, shortages that uh, 
uh, Zambians are experiencing from different uh, provinces, then government is not to blame, but more nationals are to blame. You will be right in part. Government has tried, has demonstrated its willingness to cushion the impact of petroleum products. If you remember in parliament, the minister said there will be no up, upwards adjustment mm. of the product. Yes. And true to that, and even are, on Sunday, it still maintains. It still maintains. Mm. And that's the position of government. And you can see that the government has demonstrated this particular gesture and policy. And therefore, it's very important that the Mount Nationals, the smaller OMCs, mm. or the traders in this industry, can be able to help government to realize its dream for a fair market price. And this is why OMCAS is advocating that, look, it's... It's good that government has done that, but it's not very effective in the sense that the controllers of this industry are not Zambians. The majority shareholders of this industry are not Zambians. So even if we reduce that by that cost, who are we empowering? The, the multinational. And you talked about the door being closed. These multinationals not willing or they don't want to sit with you and um, you know, harmonize this industry. Have you reported this to government to say this is what is happening and um, this is a matter of agency. You need to come in and bring sanity. Have you tried to persuade government with the agency which it, need, which it deserves or you've just proposed like you've made other proposals and government thinks, okay, these are just one of those proposals. Excellent. You need to understand that. Government understands its position in as far as associations are concerned. It's not mandatory. It's not compulsive, mm. okay? But what we are appealing to government is, is it possible for, for, their, for government to put up a legal framework that compels multinationals to work with the OMCs, the indigenous or local or smaller OMCs, and that is where our position is. Yes, so we've appealed to government, but government is tied because an association is not mandatory. Government cannot give you an SI that So what is important is legal framework. It's a legal framework that compels... And government knows that they need to come up with a legal framework. And I am reliably told that there is a process that is underway to address issues of uh, indigenization, okay? Which I hope that should be achieved as parliament is opening in as soon as possible time. So that that now trickles down directly. The benefit of the seventh development plan addresses the needed candidates or the, 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 the rightful candidate in this case. So we are hoping that that is expedited and that is some of the, those are some of the bills that uh, the members of parliament can escalate in ensuring that uh, government answers to the gap that is, is between the locals and the indigenous. Uh, suppliers. Do, do, doc, uh, last year we saw the price for crude oil going down on the international market and um, the price for the commodity here in Zambia remained the same. It wasn't adjusted upwards, neither was it uh, adjusted downwards. And Zambians are asking questions, say if at all at the international market the price has dropped and our neighboring countries are able to benefit from the drop at the international market, why is it that Zambians, or why is it that Zambia couldn't see that benefit? Well, I may not answer that very effectively, but I understand it from the process perspective. Mm. So when you are procuring products like that, you order. So if it's January price, you need to understand, like I mentioned, that the price of fuel are influenced by plots and also premiums, okay? So, the price that you're gonna buy the product today is definitely not going to be the price you're gonna buy it in the next two months. And also, the increase in the product or reduction in the product is within a certain percentage. That way may possibly go up or go below. So if government just responds, you order product at this cost, before it lands and then it comes here, then you reduce, definitely you are not answering to a solution. Mm. So I want to believe that it's so from that angle that government had let, but this is what they're paying back. 
if they have got a courtesy, government has a courtesy now, is paying back by removing the VAT, removing the excise duty. Mm. You didn't enjoy this benefit when it arrived, but as government, we've made a deliberate policy to make sure that you enjoy the benefit. At the height of the price rise, globally, government had decided to withdraw the tax component, the VAT, and given us a, a, task, uh, a, a tax rebate. So we are enjoying that at the moment. So it's based on how you plan, obviously, how you're looking at your, 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 your projections. Yeah, and, and things like that. Yeah, you, 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 others are arguing to say we are experiencing this shortage because our marketing companies buy fuel in dollars and our culture hasn't been performing well or it has continued to depreciate against the dollar, or ma against major convertibles. And uh, this issue of uh, shortages, if you're not going to experience shortages, then you're going to experience a fuel hike, or the price was going to be hiked. But the minister on Sunday re-emphasized that um, we're not going to uh, hike the fuel price. But is it, does it mean then we're going to be experiencing fuel shortages now that oil companies are buying in dollars and our quarters not be performing well against the dollar? Well, all this while, when you're buying products, you're buying in dollar. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the depreciation of quacha uh, comes in with its own impact. But overall, when you look at the loss on the quacha end against the dollar, government obviously has taken into consideration to bring up mitigative measures such as what we are enjoying currently. And I think that government has addressed specifics on what actually has cushioned on the impact of, of, uh, of a dollar against the quacha. So what we are seeing is basically a very well calculated move in answering to the specifics of the industry. Doc, are you in a position to give us an assurance or to promise us, because it has been three weeks now in some uh, provinces where they have been experiencing fuel shortages. Are you in a position to assure Zambians or to assure those people in those provinces to say, okay, it has been three weeks, but uh, maybe come first week of February, or maybe uh, as we head towards the end of January, then uh, fuel will be available. Are you in that position? <laughs> well, the onus of that promise lies on the Ministry of Energy. Like I said, they've put measures in place, and OMCs are responding positively. Orders have been secured. I'll give you an example of what government has also done that has not been in the limelight. You used to take a lot of time at the border to clear product. That's not the case. Government has, uh, has actually encouraged through the DRA to do pre-clearances. So we expect that that process, the OMCs that are listening to me and the smaller OMCs can ensure that that facility is maximized. And by the way, ZRA is a very friendly platform when it comes to this commodity. They are well understanding. Okay? So we, I don't see hiccups because there's product in Beira. There's product in, in Dar es Salaam. So Which is, is meant for Zambia? Well, you can do sport purchase there. We meant for Zambia or any other country. But there's enough stock. You can move it into the country. Okay? Mm. With the current incentives that government has put in place, I do expect that most of these OMC that have actually deliberately went to the Ministry of Energy to seek for a waiver, they should be able to answer to the terms of reference of that waiver by ensuring that product is secured. Mm. So I want to believe that that has been uh, put in place and uh, that most of the OMCs uh, are making efforts in ensuring... But you can't give a, a, a time frame. I may not give a time frame, but I can give an assurance that product, as pay the ministerial speech this morning or yesterday, Definitely, uh, there'll be a commodity that is be on the market. With the coronavirus, others are saying, like we've seen other countries, you know, like in the first, uh, well, 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 this is the second wave of COVID-19. In the first wave, we saw countries, you know, closing down their borders. Now we're in the second wave, and um, other countries have already started, you know, imposing lockdowns. Uh, is it going to, if, if at all, the countries that surround Zambia, uh, most of them were to... Uh, you know, to impose lockdowns. 
Is it going to affect the OMCs or the industry? And if not, then what, if, if at all they close their borders, then what are the plans? Uh, I want to, to say that uh, one of the very critical industries such as the oil industry has been preserved. Governments understand that this is a critical engine of every economy. So we, we enjoy certain privileges. Even when we are in the midst at the peak of COVID, we were given certain privileges that drivers would, would, would bring in products from different borders and exceptions were taken. Bilateral agreements were done to make sure that there is facilitation of this product. So we still don't expect that in this COVID, the, the second wave of COVID, would drastically affect uh, our, our oil industry as per se. Doc, we have to go. Your concluding remarks. Well, my concluding remarks is that we still continue to uh, appreciate government in its efforts to ensure that there has been uh, a reduction or totally uh, a rebate on, uh, on excise and VAT. And uh, I would like to assure uh, our Zambian people that product will be made available in the market and uh, OMCAS is doing everything possible to encourage its members to procure this product. And uh, we will ensure that by the mandate given to us, we encourage other participatory uh, organs to be able to participate in the supply of this product on the market. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Doc. This has been a special interview on your channel of choice, Movie Television. And I've been talking to Dr. Kafula Mubanga, who is president of the Oil Marketing Companies Association of Zambia. You've uh, got, I'm sure you've gotten one or two things, and you know how the market, uh, you know, is playing. And I hope and trust that the, sub, uh, the, 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 the proposals that they've been making to the Minister of, uh, of Energy, as well as uh, to the Office of the President, on how they should, uh, you know, work as an association and how the market should operate. I'm sure these are uh, queries uh, or these concerns will be responded to as quick as possible. There you have it. My name is Kelvin Tabula, Chief Focal. Until next time, good afternoon.